so we've got some helper files. Let's create a few more helper files. While we're at it, why not? So we can close this guy out. So we got, and actually we want to get rid of this because we don't. That's going to cause us problems in our app. So we'll comment that out. So two forward slashes is a comment, and it will not be rendered when PHP gets executed. So let's create a class for logs. We'll create a new text file. We we'll call this logs. PHP. Yep, I want to change it. So we're going to start out with this. Once again, PHP. Put the ending tags over there. And now we have to include what's in this DB connection. So what we have to do is we need to put a statement called require underscore once. And we call this DB connection.php. So now this file can access our database. Sweet. So we also need to tell it, since we're going to be passing in dates, we need to tell it what our time zone is. So we're going to say default, or, sorry, date, default, time zone, set, and you can Google this online if you need to, Oops. Uh, but mine is going to be America slash Chicago, because I'm in the central time zone. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, and then we're going to create a function, and we're assuming that you know a little bit about programming, but if not, that's okay. So a function is just uh, a set of instructions that are all wrapped up into one little piece. And the function is going to have to have a name, we're going to call it log it, and then in parentheses, you can say, hey, what information can I expect to receive? So this is going to expect to receive a message, and then possibly a table name and we're gonna give it a default value of nothing in case we don't use it because we may not and then let's give it an application name and we're gonna give that a default of nothing as well so <clears throat> we're gonna close off our sorry so we could call say function we could just call log it and put in a message and have it be in our database and be good or we could say I'm using this database for multiple applications, so I may want to track what table's getting affected so I can search on that. I may want to track what kind of application it's affecting so I can query on that. It's just useful stuff you can use statistically later on down the line. So what we're going to do is we're going to say global connection. So we're basically bringing our connection variable in from the other file since we've required it. Now we're going to kind of bring it in. And then we're going to say cleaned message equals remove single quotes. And we, this doesn't exist. This is a function call. So we're going to open parenthesis and we're going to pass in our message. So we need to create this now because it's not doing us any good. So let's create another function down here. And it's going to be called remove single quotes. And it's going to pass in a query. We're going to take our entire query before we log it. This is the goal. And get rid of any single quotes because that's going to mess up our insert statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to say cleaned query equals str replace. And if you want to know, like if you're looking for something in PHP, Let's say PHP plus replace. You want to replace something inside of a string. You'll always have a PHP.NET manual. So replace all occurrences of this something in a string. You'll have a file, a page that looks like this, and it's got references over here. And there's usually examples at the bottom, and people place their inputs in here. Everybody has their say. You can see everybody's like, oh, Feel free to optimize this using this, and these guys like they'll say, "Let's do this like this." And this does not replace strings that become part of replacement string. Blah blah. So anyway, so we're going to str replace, and what we're going to do? Open quotes. We're going to do single quote. And we're going to replace that with a pipe, and then we got to tell it which. What are we actually replacing? So here's our query. We're going to replace all of these with these. So cool. So now we're just going to return that. Excellent. 
<clears throat> so now up here we're clean. So we're not gonna worry about user ID sessions. We won't do any of that. We won't get into sessions and user IDs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want a date that it got posted. So post date equals <clears throat> and we're gonna use a function called add hours to time. And we're gonna say just give me right now. Add zero hours. So we need to create this function. So let's go down here. Function. Add hours to time. And inside of that, we are going to take in the difference. Now dates in PHP are really, really wacky. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of crazy stuff. So we're gonna say submit date equals time. So we're just gonna create and this is gonna give me the date of January 1st, 1974, which is called epoch time. It's gonna give me the number of minutes since then. So really, really kind of crazy. So we're gonna say ODBC date time is gonna equal to STRF time. And this is string from time. So we're gonna create uh, this wacky little setup here. So I'm gonna say percent capital Y dash percent little m minus percent little d space percent capital H colon percent capital M colon percent capital S okay we're gonna do that and we're gonna take that and say submit date okay now this will be the current time if the time zone is set up for America Chicago in the PHP.ini or in our file here. Uh, we could echo this out if we want to play with it. So let's create a new variable called hours back. And that's going to be string two time. And that's going to be ODBC date time colon. Now colon is how we can ca concatenate things. So if I wanted to say my first name is Mike, last name is Beddingfield, return, first name, period, open single quote with the space, open single quote, period, last name. Then it would be Mike space Beddingfield. So we're going to concatenate back to this. And we're going to do that. We're going to put the space in it. We're going to do a concatenation again. I'm going to say difference. And then we're going to actually tell it to use hours. So now we're going to say new date is equal to strf time. This is going to get crazy again. We're just going to copy this. It's going to be the same thing. And then we're going to put a comma. We're going to say hours back. And then we're going to return new date. Okay. So now, that's what our post date is going to be. So now we're ready to come up here and say query. Sorry, this is taking forever, I know. But we're going to be using this a lot. So it's going to be insert into logs. So this is an SQL statement. You should be fairly familiar with SQL if you're taking this course. And we're going to come over here. And we're going to say, we're going to do message, and we're going to do post date, and app, and table. And then over here, we've got message, post date, app, table. So I'm going to say, tick, tick, comma, tick, tick, comma, tick, tick, comma, tick, tick. And here, I'm going to do curly brackets, curly brackets, curly brackets, curly brackets. And here we can reference our variables. So we're going to say message, pardon me, and we're going to say table name, this is post date, so we're going to say post date, and the next one we said was app, so we're going to do application, which we had up here, and we'll do table name. Very case sensitive, be very careful about that. 
So now we're gonna say <clears throat> ODBC exec. First thing you wanna do is pass in your connection and then pass in your query. And we're gonna next video we're gonna come back and create this table and test it all out.